pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sincerely, Mayor Dick Greminger and Martin Toma. Thank you very much. It's been fun and you got to keep it going. Yeah. I'll still be watching. <laughs> we still know where you live. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item will be the approval of the agenda. And I think we're going to make a slight change to the agenda. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to to move this along to the presentation. So I'd like to slide that up to above approval of the minutes. Okay, is there second. a second? second? Bob seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thanks, Jan. All right, gentlemen, you have the floor. Thank you. We'll turn the lights down. I'll get a second. Oh. I got it. Okay, well, we just wanted to catch up with you, bring you up to speed. I've talked to Bob several times. I've been hard to catch up with him uh, and bring you up to what we're doing with the uh, museum and where we're at on it. We start every meeting that we get a chance to by uh, putting this on the board, which is our dream sheet, which simply says, you know, if you're gonna do it, you gotta dream about it. And if you talk about it, things seem to happen. And uh, Bob, I've showed you this probably several years ago and Sandra and I have talked about it several times. We talk about a goal is top tourist on pavement, which simply means how do you make the merchants and hotels, motels, beds, breakfast, city of St. Genevieve County, and uh, the industry in St. Genevieve and the tourist industry survive. And as success means more than one day in town, keeping our tourists here more than one day. So we've developed this several years ago and said, you know, the, our, we got some natural resources here in St. Genevieve that we can use without having to dig in people's pockets. The number one was the winery and bus tour. And uh, Sandra, that's up and going, and that's very nice. And I've heard some uh, positive remarks about the people who have rented the bus. They've been very happy with that. Uh, the second piece is our piece, which we'll talk about tonight, which is a museum. The third piece is that railroad uh, from St. Genevieve back out to Farmington uh, to a place called Ogbarn Switch. And Ogbarn Switch has a Y out there. We could turn a steam engine and bring it back. And uh, I am on the advisory board as well as Sandra is for Mississippi Lime. And we've had two meetings now with Mississippi Lime about the possibility of working on that again because they rent that railroad and they keep it open uh, just to ship on. They'd have the right of passage on it and uh, it would definitely be a shot in the arm. So that is, while it's at its infancy stages again, at one time we had that done. Back in the mid 80s it was done and then it got derailed. But uh, this time Mississippi Lime is asking us to work with them on it. So that's encouraging. 
then the fourth is we got a natural with the river here and uh, Viking Cruise Lines is building some ships down in uh, Louisiana now. I think they said six, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So they're going to bring bringing those up to Mississippi and I hope that we can capitalize on that. So uh, we start every meeting with that. Our piece of this thing is this, the vision for the museum. And uh, this is a accumulation of about four years of work, folks. We went to the museum and I said that when I got on the museum board, I found out that I became a professional beggar. And uh, nobody told me that's what it was about, but every bill we had to pay, we had to go beg money to pay for it. And uh, we immediately started having meetings and vetting processes where we could turn that museum into a profit center and make it pay its own way. Uh, so after several years of looking at different options and saying, okay, will that support a museum and will it, will it pay its way? Or are we gonna create another thing that's causing a, a drain on the economy of St. Genevieve? And uh, during that process, Bernie Bowman introduced me to Guy Darrell and Guy and Doris, uh, ended up being a, a facility where we can actually turn the museum into a profit center. They give us a way to uh, make a museum profitable. And they've been in, they spent their entire life doing this. That's all they've done. That, this is Guy and Doris Darrow. Uh, they work with museums. They display at museums. That's their entire livelihood. Uh, right now, they're displayed at uh, do you know the name of the gardens up there? Powell Gardens? Powell Gardens, Kansas City. They just finished up in... McGee Gardens? Yeah, and they were down in Texas. Yeah. That, is yeah. that McGee? No, McGee no. is in Vernal Beach, Florida. Okay, and they, they, their, first, their first stop this year was the uh, um, San Antonio Botanical Garden. So this is the way they make a living. Uh, while he is, he likes archaeology, he likes paleontology, he likes history, he likes everything. He spent a lifetime collecting. He's got a lifetime of collection, but in order for him to make a living, he fleshed out dinosaurs to their true size, fleshed them out, creates them in his uh, studio out in Valley Mines, and then he goes to these Vernal Beach and to uh, all these other gardens, and he sets the dinosaurs up in the gardens, and people come to see his creations. He's a recreationist, is his official title. He's a recreationist of uh, those ancient animals. Full, full size, full scale. So he takes them, they hire him to do it. In Vernal Beach, Florida, he brought in 33,000 people in three months. So, and uh, up at Powell Gardens, I asked him the other night, he said he, the first month he was up there, they had 25,000, he'll be up there for four months. And then he moves from there. He, he's booked anyway. He's booked through 2018. But what he tells us is he's 62 years old. He's got an entire collection of stuff that him and his wife have put together. And here it sets in his house and his studio and nobody's seeing it. He said, I'm ready to bring this to a learning center where I can get young minds excited about this and get the, them into this. And he said, you can put it on the TV and you can put it any place else, but until they can come and touch it, and feel it, they won't actually get involved with it. So we looked at them, we talked to them, we had several meetings with them, we signed a contract with them, and they will come to our museum and uh, they will become our curators and they will run the museum. And they will tell us how to run it on a profitable basis and they got idea after idea after idea, along with a gentleman by the name of Kendall Hart who is their, uh, I guess he's an artist too. Mm -hmm. So a graphic designer by nature. Yeah, so <coughs> he will come with them and they will set up the museum. Now here's the two things they ask of us. They said, we will do this if you do these two things. Number one, give us a professional venue to put our merchandise, because we've got very professional merchandise. And uh, we want something that looks like the DuBerg Center. So. Uh, we looked at buildings and after looking at several buildings, the Ketting building actually had an elevator and is uh, uh, handicapped accessible. 
So we thought, well, there's our best bet. Uh, we had looked at the uh, Bovary also, but we had to put an elevator in. So uh, we went to the Kettings. We signed a contract with them uh, to purchase that building. And uh, Dodo Ketting, being on the past member of the museum board, was very much in favor of it. So we've done that piece. And then we set up, again, we will go back to this. This is our campaign, a vision for the building the future and honoring the past. Rich, you got anything you want to say about our campaign right there? Well, the, one of the most important things that we don't want to overlook and we do want the general public to fully understand is we didn't turn our back on the existing museum. Uh, we, we tried every figuring out every possible scenario to keep the existing museum a museum um, but we realize that it it just isn't big enough for what is in storage that no one has seen um, and we didn't want to go with the two buildings because we didn't want one to be an annex of the other so we ended up with the with the idea to repurpose the Ketting building and what uh, Guy and, and, and um, his wife are bringing will be incorporated within um, what we have, what we currently have. And what we have in storage that only a couple of us have seen because we needed to go in the closet for something, uh, that stuff will be on display as well. And we've also offered um, the, uh, when that building becomes offices, uh, county offices, uh, we've put on the table a, a proposal that you know we would if they have a viewing area or a lobby of some kind, we would leave some of the f artifacts that are currently in the now museum, we would put those on display and as we rotate our displays, we would rotate the items in the lobby as well. So it's kind of paying a little homage to you know, what once was. And we don't own the building. We never have owned the building. The chamber owns the building. Dina, is that correct? Well, okay. Ch chamber used to own it. They unloaded it. I mean, uh, made a darling deal. Yeah. And the county owned the ground that it was set, sitting on. So, and the roof has leaked for, I guess, Dina, I guess ever since you've been there and ever since I've been. And uh, all we could ever get, because we don't own the building, is a new five gallon bucket to set under the leak. So. Uh, it became obvious that if we're going to do this, we got to control our destiny by owning the building and doing things in the right way. So we married up with the Darrells, and I, I've just got photos here. This is a picture of what he does. That's the Missouri dinosaur, the one that they are unearthing down in Bollinger County right now. And uh, Guy and Doris do have a museum in Bollinger County currently. They do not intend to close that museum but they do not have an active museum board. And they, so the two things they ask us is, number one, give us a professional venue to put our merchandise in. Number two, give us a museum board that's an active museum board that will run this as a business. And what they want to do is bring these things to St. Genevieve. And they want to make a living off of all the stuff, the artifacts. This isn't all they've got. I mean, if you've seen everything they've got, the. Uh, collectibles that they got, the fossils, the uh, Greek and the German and the... Uh, Greek, Roman, Viking, early Viking, um, 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 Inca, Aztec. Um, they just cover all of they, it. They, what they didn't dig up, they do what most collectors do, and they buy other people's collections because a person doesn't want his or her collection just being sold on pennies to the dollar if there are no heirs involved to continue the, the collecting process. So um, the, the dinosaurs, uh, the, 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 the egg displays, the baby dinosaurs, the full-size parent dinosaur, these are just, this is just kind of like um, icing on this museum learning center cake. Uh, the artifacts and fossils that are going to be put on display and I know this sounds kind of out there but this could very well be the biggest attraction between St. Louis and Memphis 
if all the puzzle pieces fall the way we think they're going to fall. And the key for us is <clears throat> how do we turn a profit with this? Well, uh, Guy says they're drawing 33,000 people in three months. He said we will bring an additional 25,000 people to St. Genevieve over the course of a year. Now his number's a lot higher than that guy's. But we factored it down to uh, 25,000. And if we bring 25,000 additional people through St. Genevieve, what will it do for tourism and the businesses and the hotels, motels, restaurants, and all those neat shops that open that starve to death because we don't have enough tourists on the pavement? We'll have people in town. He says we'll bring in a lot more than that. We said 25,000. And Rich, if you want to cover on the back cover there, what we have done, we set out and said, okay, in order to accomplish this, we're going to have to raise our seed money to get this started. We need enough money to start the museum, buy the building, renovate that building, and uh, <clears throat> get our one year's operating cost. And after that, it will cash flow. So on the last cover, the back cover, uh, you will see construction period cost. And that was uh, 958000 for the building and renovating that building, including some overruns in it, which never happened, did they, Bob? <laughs> no. Okay, mm -hmm. didn't think so. Not old buildings. <laughs> Not new buildings. <clears throat> Advertising and promotional expenses are salaries and payroll taxes, building utilities, alarm system, maintenance and repair. And uh, part of that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Rich, where we have to get it's certified, a museum is certified if they're what? They're fully accredited. Accredited. We, we want to be an accredited museum because when you're an accredited museum, that means you can bring displays in from other museums and swap them out and share your displays, which you broaden the amount of exposure to the public and what we can do. So the museum startup costs, uh, operational expenses, including utility salaries and payroll taxes, and setting up the gift shop uh, one of our big problems right now folks is people walk into the museum they look around they walk back out the door because we don't have a turnstile and we've got two people or we got one person there and if they walk out the door uh it's a little hard for irma to go out and chase them down and she don't want to call dina and tell dina to tackle them as they're going past over there so <laughs> <laughs> but in this will and people will enter the gift shop will be open all year long and will be available for people to shop in, uh, but then they enter the museum through the gift shop, so they'll have to pay an entry fee to get into that gift shop. Uh, we will have a full-time marketing department. The marketing department will be people who are calling on schools. Uh, Rich, I'll let you handle that one because that's your cup of tea. Yeah, uh, the, um, the, the marketing directors have been told to send out uh, blanket announcements within a 150 to 200 mile radius of the facility and uh, that includes um, cities that have some low income school districts we are in possession of a 501c3 designation which means if a school would like to come but they can't afford we have a vehicle in place underneath the banner of the 501c3 where we could underwrite the visit, whether it's transportation, whether it's uh, admissions and transportation, whether it's admissions, a small gift, whatever a school needs to be able to come, if they can't afford to come, we'll be able to get them here. And it will help us at tax time because the 501c3 is, you know, we want to make money, but we can't make money, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we can't pocket it. Um, the other thing, the other thing uh, that goes along with, with the 501c3 is that we can, at graduation time, we can scholarship uh, graduating uh, uh, boys and girls, uh, senior boys and girls. Uh, in my hometown, there, there was the public high school, there was the Catholic high school, there was the vocational high school. Um, 2,100 kids, 800 kids, 600 kids. Uh, one year through one of uh, the 501c3s that I was a part of, we were able to give uh, three graduating senior boys and three graduating senior girls $2,500 each. I mean, that was the kind of 
extra money we had after we paid the bills, after we paid the salaries for the people that were involved in our fundraising, and um, we uh, we were able to do that. Most of the time, it was in between in between the 500 and the 750 per person. Uh, um, uh, the graduating kids got that. Uh, w one thing I would like to mention is we've been extremely careful not guaranteeing what the uptick for the businesses, for the, the, the restaurant service, the, 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 the uh, retail uh, the district, the uh, hotel, motel. We've been careful not to put guarantees on what they could look for uh, in the future, but simple math dictates if you have X amount of thousand more people coming into town, uh, there's a good percentage uh, that those people are going to spend, you know, a little extra money that wouldn't have been spent, you know, without this without this facility. And at the bottom of that, you, you see that in our brochure, financial impact to the uh, region, and we projected 25,000 people with an $8 admission would bring 200,000 into the museum. Uh, miscellaneous sales at three dollars average and that's for souvenirs and the average person will s that spend I think he said eight dollars but we yeah. pared down everything that they said so that we weren't over projecting ten dollar average purchase in the county so they're going to eat a meal here they're going to buy some gas here they'll do whatever and that was actually eighteen dollars but we pared it back to ten tax uh, tax that we will get off of those items and then total sales increase for the community is 536 that's 536 I believe. yeah so and uh, we're and we're doing our part to keep people <coughs> in town because we're planning on having some sort of amphitheater some sort of some sort of viewing center where we can during the daytime show loops of this that and the other thing um, but at night there are so many museum related. I mean, I think there's four movies in the Night at the Museum series. There's all the Indiana Jones. There's all those other Egyptian type uh, uh, movies that we could run to keep people in town. So, you know, that family of four that would normally come in and then leave, well, we're hoping that they come in, they have a bite to eat, they come back, and then they realize. You know what? It's maybe a little, little too late to to go home. Let's see if we can find a room somewhere. So all of this stuff that you're seeing on the screen it was made by Guy Darrell. These were fleshed out by him, and that's how come he says he's a recreationist. He makes these out at Valley Mines. He's and if you go in his studio, it's amazing. He's got these big things sitting all over the place that he's in some process of making. <clears throat> May I ask a question? You may. First of all, he's in Valley Mines. He's been there all these years. <laughs> and no. nobody knew it? No. He was, I don't know where he, he okay. originated from, but uh, he bought a piece of ground from Bernie Bowman that Bernie owned out in Valley Mines, okay. which is how he ended up in Valley Mines. So, and now he's got his studios out there, and he, I think he's got uh, one, two, three four buildings out there where he's got all of this stuff housed and to go through it him and Doris are both very talkative about it and they'll tell you stories about it and so and I think the little catchphrase you had at the very beginning uh, T.O.P. yep tourist I, on pavement I, I love that I think that's just really says it all well, I think that when we're talking about things, not just this group or every group that I go to, I show that slide first because if everybody is thinking about it, things start happening. We had nothing to do with uh, Viking deciding to do that ship down there, but we had already thought about why isn't there a barge that looks like the Huck Finn or something coming out of St. Louis and docking in St. Genevieve and bringing people and making maybe two or three turns a week and saying, okay, here is a mini vacation for you from St. Louis. You're going down the Mississippi River on the Huck Finn. You will dock at St. Genevieve. The <clears throat> bus will pick you up at St. Genevieve and you can tour some old homes that first day. 
you're going to be picked up and taken to the wineries the second day. You go all the way over to wineries. When you get back to the wineries, you can't go home, naturally, so you're going to have to stay the third day. And then go to the museum or go to ride the train, do something. We'll have a three or four day mini vacation. So that's where I started out with it. And so that's, uh, we just got to find a person. And you know, when you put it up on the screen, all of a sudden somebody's talking to somebody and they say, hey, that's an idea. Yeah, I've talked to somebody that's interested in that. You start connecting the dots and people join together. That's the way Walt Disney started it. So. Okay, uh, questions please, because uh, anything we'll go, we can babble as long as you want, but I'm sure you got an agenda you'd like to follow. Are you gonna go through a silent phase of uh, pledging and then a yes. more active one? Yes. What's your timetable to get to, just general timetable to get to, to the museum open? Uh, we'll be in the silent, we're doing the silent phase right now, and we'll, we'll start the active phase in about a couple months. Hope, hopefully that, capital campaign is over by the end of the year or beginning for the first quarter of next year. Uh, until we have 50% of the money actually pledged, we can't go to the bank and secure a loan. And uh, so we, we anticipate about a year, year to a year and a half. And then another year and a half to build? Well, no, Bob, you know it doesn't take that long on these antique buildings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was being nice. Yes, I know you were. Uh, <laughs> and we actually secured your architect and asked him the questions because when you guys went through it, it was a learning process, was it not? Well, part of it, we were getting historic tax credits also. I don't yeah. know if you're going to do that. Uh, he scared the hell out of us with those. So I don't think we will, but that's up for debate yet. We haven't really decided that. I mean, being a not-for-profit, they don't benefit you, but at least the Missouri State ones you can sell. 90 cents on the dollar approximately. Yeah. So. Okay. Ha having a guy in uh, Doris Darrow calling the shots once the building is ready, we won't lose any downtime in setting anything up because they already know, you know, what's going where. We, we, we gave them an outline of what we'd like to see room by room, and they've already figured out what kind of display cases. Uh, they need to bring over, we need to purchase, they know what's going in there. They've already thought out what this facility is going to look like. So there shouldn't be a lot of, a lot of time be, between the you know, last coat of paint and the ribbon cutting. And then they, their thought process is that we're going to have a mining room that tells the story of mining because we are leaning heavy on the four major people here but god what a story to tell about mississippi live you're you're driving on we got two towns in st genevieve there's a town underneath of us that runs 24 hours a day and nobody's telling that story but there's a cafeteria change room mechanic shops uh four lane highways down there running uke trucks uh stoplights i mean it's just an amazing story uh to go up to tire rock and watch them mining uh, 150 feet or more below the Mississippi River. That's right next door to them on the other side of the railroad track. What an amazing story. And we talked to them about using a drone to take pictures and show how the trucks are coming out of there. And now, uh, uh, Lawoist, 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 uh, they tell me they're now mining underground. They have started going underground. So they've got another story. Uh, and we were, we're currently, that's the silent phase, Bob. We, that's the one we're in now, talking to our businesses. But we will have a mining story to tell. Then we're going to have a St. Genevieve room where we tell the story of people in St. Genevieve. So the Mueller family can bring anything in they want. That's their room for three months. And put the pictures up of the Mueller family, how they got here, what the positions they took, uh, whatever they want. And how many you know, days they spent in jail? Yeah, whatever that may be. <laughs> what, yeah. uh, you can edit can some of that out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, then and what we're looking at is how do you keep people coming back to the museum? I, I mean, I'd like to see the history of some people uh, uh, that started St. Genevieve, uh, the Oberleys, the Dunseys. Those are big names and, and what they've done and how they did it. And so we're having that in there in addition to other items.
I would like to tell you what that is, but we, I haven't got a we don't, we don't know if it's an ugly face. We don't know if it's a bunch of sea urchins stuck together. It's a, Every it's time... A, it's a score. Oh. Uh, it looks like the mold scores and things. It's one of those, those are, they've got those that are hundreds of millions of years old. Wow. Well, there you go. Thank you. Tom? Thank you. I, I had no clue. <laughs> I've watched that thing and it's been in every picture yeah, yeah. he gives but us, but I have no clue what it is. Yeah. That was my question. How big is it in reality? You said it's microscopic. So they have, they have just uh, these beads and I mean, they've just got uh, things coming in. And you know, uh, I told this story to, I know I've shared it with Sandra, but since we've started this, we got a lot of people now calling us and donating stuff to the museum. Uh, Anne DeGeneva donated her dad, Dr. DeGeneva's original wood exam table from back in the 1950s with the wood medicine cabinet that goes next to it. And we are storing it up at the uh, hospital right now. We're working with the hospital. We'd like to put a tribute up to Dr. DeGeneva and maybe Dr. Luke Woody up in the hospital, maybe some life-size cutouts. So you can go up and get your picture taken with them in the, in the lobby of the hospital. But there's a lot of things happening. We've got a lot of people calling and donating stuff. So it's going very well. Anyone else have a question? Comment? Good comments. Yes, good comments. Well, th this is just mind-blowing. You've done a wonderful job not just with the presentation but with the whole concept of putting it together it's, it's really just terrific and i know everybody here is happy to have some teeny tiny little part of participating in this and we appreciate it and we appreciate your time both of you for coming tonight and and sharing this with and sharing your evening with us thank well, you we appreciate well, the opportunity thanks, to come thanks down for having and tell us, the yeah. story so uh any questions, uh, please give us a call. You know how to get in touch with us. And we will get out of your way as soon as we unplug everything here. It looks like you pretty well got that down to a science with those cords. Yeah. We stole them too. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Have Thank, a good you. Day. Thank you very good much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, <coughs> I know we're all very impressed and excited about the upcoming museum and the work we're all going to be able to do to help them bring that to reality. It's just amazing. I still can't get over it. It's all it's sitting in Valley Mines right now, but that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our agenda, and we will have the, has everyone had, has anyone had a chance to read the minutes that are before you? If not, let's take a moment and look over the last meeting minutes, and then I'll entertain a motion to approve. If there are no... So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We have two citizens here. Do either one of you have anything to say before our next meeting? No. Okay. No. <laughs> All right, Sandra. Okay. Yeah, that's 
trying to sail down to you. Okay. I will try to be brief tonight. I'm not known for that, but I'll try to be brief. Um, you have um, some pretty color charts there about the total number of visitors through the Welcome Center in the month of May. Um, we had 2,825 guests. That was up 18% compared to May of last year. May of last year dipped down a little bit from the year before. Um, so um, even though we're up 9% for the calendar year to date, it's pretty consistent with last year's year to date at this point. Um, May and <coughs> April were very busy for us in terms of the groups through St. Genevieve and the Welcome Center. Um, our students were um, especially um, heavy volume this year and um, quite a few adults as well. We had over 1,000 um, student and adult group visitors this year, which um, as you can see was um, higher than before. It's your second chart there. Um, so the months of April and May, 409 in April and 632 in May. Um, just, a, just a touch base on you know the ins and outs of what we do down there at the Welcome Center. One of the things, are you missing one? Are you missing the second mm -hmm. color sheet? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I gave you two the same thing. You just got this one. You've got it. Okay. That's all. I mean. Just one. Ooh, nice. Speedy delivery. Um. Uh, so. This week on Thursday, we're going to be hosting a media liaison from a French television station. Um, he is looking in particular for information about the French in the Middle Mississippi Valley. Um, we've set up several things for him. He's going to be staying at the Microtel on Wednesday night, Sabrina. So, um, and then next week, we have a rider sponsored by the Missouri Division of Tourism. They're doing a feature on the Great River Road earlier this year like it was cold maybe it was january or february um, missouri division of tourism sent two of their um, pr people and two travel riders here we you know toured them around through the historic sites had lunch with them and encouraged them to think of creative things they could say about um, st genevieve in order to bring additional media exposure to us this is the first one to come to fruition uh, from that um, they haven't told me yet what uh, publication the journalist writes for, but they'll be in next week. Um, French Festival, we just concluded a very successful French Heritage Festival. Um, this year, for the first time, we had the what used to be called the street dance. This year was a free concert and dance. Um, we had it for the first time at Lions Club Park, which is where quite a few of the daytime activities are. And um, we really received a lot of very positive comments about that. That event is sponsored by St. Genevieve Downtown Renewal. Um, and then um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, Transportation Task Force, as uh, Robert Wolk just mentioned, we are very excited about the opening of the St. Genevieve Trolley. Um, the, as you know, the um, Tourism Tax Commission approved now these you get to look at. I got to hand them back in because we'll be using them in the second meeting tonight. So I'll pass it around. here's one of those. I'll just take it around. Okay. Um, so Tourism Tax Commission approved the funding and design of a new rack card for St. Genevieve, um, and so sort of like rehabbing old buildings. You think this is something that's you know three weeks, maybe a month at tops. Um, it takes a little longer than that. That's all. They were only four. Um, oh sure. So, uh, so this is this is at the printers now, and we will be enjoying it back very soon. As you can see, we tried to brighten it up. We used our militia as opposed to the um, French Marines, Marines militia on the front, and um, we tried to get some people shots on the back as well as some inviting interior shots. So while the B&B owners in the room probably know whose B&Bs these are, they'll be the only ones to know whose B&Bs these are. Um, interior rooms, there's a nice picture of Bob um, chatting with two visitors to our St. Genevieve History Museum, and then also a winery shot. Again, we probably know exactly what winery this is, but 99% of the people who will be picking this up will not know. 
So um, this one will be distributed for six months along all of the hotels along the I-55 corridor as well as locations in St. Louis, uh, major corporations, a couple of universities, and Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. So. Good job. Yes, yeah, thank you. So we put the uh, revisions to the new brochure, the new St. Jimmy Visitor's Guide on hold while we got this project out the door, it's out the door, and now we're at full tilt on the brochure revisions. Um, uh, Bob, would you like to talk about Wildlife Refuge or NPS? Yeah, we, well, I'll talk about M. I think it's on the agenda later. But yes, oh, I'm sorry, but yes. You want to talk about it now or later? Let's talk about the wildlife. Okay. Just yeah. Uh, well, we went to the Board of Aldermen and kind of gave an update on where we're at on that. And we had you know, a number of meetings with Fish and Wildlife, Missouri Department of Conservation. Um, our little group is Sandra, John Carroll, Bernie Bowman, and myself. And we kind of showed the uh, Board of Aldermen what we were thinking about. And I think we got very favorable response from them couple of very enthusiastic responses. Let's go ahead and, and get this moving. Uh, we weren't there to ask for money, but we are going to, Dan Kriegler from Fish and Wild, Wildlife is going to come um, Thursday evening and talk to, I think it's a working session, um, give a presentation on their involvement. And I must admit we've had very good working relationships with both the Fed, federal agency and, and the uh, Department of Missouri, uh, Missouri Conservation. They, really gotten enthusiastic about this project. It involves uh, some tree planting, uh, it involves trails, it involves overlooks, parking, uh, kind of using some of our natural resources on city-owned property, both inside and outside the levee. That's kind of a natural extension of the uh, north uh, uh, hiking and biking trail, too. So it's good. You guys have made some really good progress on that, yes. Seems to be picking up momentum. Yes. Much like the NPS, which we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> uh, then I just wanted to point out, you all received copies of the um, July through December um, calendar of events cards. These are now available at the Welcome Center. Businesses can stop by and pick them up. Um, we send a lot of these out, and when people come to visit the Welcome Center, we make sure that they take these with them to plan their next trip, so. Any questions for Sandra? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Let's move on then to, um, under old business, the NPS update. Well, it did, uh, the report did come out, and uh, they, Congress, our, our representative and senators moved very quickly in sponsoring bills. Uh, the, the House bill and the Senate bill differed slightly, uh, and there was a couple issues that we wanted to get straightened out or, or changed. One was be called a historical, historic park rather than a historic site. I had the historic and historical backwards, but the, uh, that, that was important, and there was some language in the House bill that was kind of contradictory. So, Trying to get that straightened out, uh, Senator Blunt. But it was these were sponsored by uh, Senator Blunt, Senator McCaskill, and, and Representative Jason Smith. And uh, just last Wednesday, I think Senator Blunt was in front of the uh, subcommittee in the Senate uh, talking about this particular bill, and it was followed by uh, Representative Dr. Tufin from the, the National Park Service, and she's going. To, they must have had 27 bills and they listed the ones that the National Park Service supported and the St. Genevieve uh, Park was included in that. The one interesting thing, there were only two panel members, two senators, and one was a senator from New Mexico and he pipes up, he says, my parents took me to St. Genevieve yeah. when I was a little kid. So here we had this New Mexican senator kind of supporting it too. So it, it's either going to happen before the 4th of July or it'll end up in a lame duck session later on, but I think they're pushing it rather quickly, so keep your fingers crossed. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know you've already seen the Herald story, I can tell, because you, oh, you didn't see it? No, didn't. Well, wait till you see the front page of the Herald that just came out today. No, I didn't see it. It's, they did, a, Toby did a really good job covering everything about those hearings. It, it he must have been, 
watching, yeah, watching C-SPAN or something, you know, when they have the hearings on, because he's quoting Senator Blunt, and he quoted that senator from New Mexico, and just, just it sounds like it was just a love fest. <laughs> so I, th I think we're all... Well, after that, you know, the, the, the panel did question Dr. Toothman on a couple of issues very, very strongly. This wasn't one of them. No, no, but it's, we're all so happy. It's going very, very well, finally. Who said finally? Mm -hmm. um, okay, and uh, the Division of Tourism Grants, is you going to speak to yes, that? Yes, yes. So um, we recently, um, as in the month of June, uh, received our um, approvals and full funding for both of the grant requests that we had put through to the Missouri Division of Tourism. As you know, we've had the co-op grant for years. We received 6000 uh, in approved funds through the co-op grant. And then there's a category called MPD, Marketing Program Development. We've participated in this in each one of the last three years. The project that we have um, almost under wraps right now is our mobile responsive website project um, through that MPD. So we got 4000 for FY17 for the MPD. Um, and we're doing a visitor profile study. So research. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, we're excited. We so we're considered a county tourism level one, and six thousand in one program and four thousand in the other is the maximum that you can apply for and maximum you can receive when you are a CTL one. So we did what we could. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, let's move right along now and move into new business, and we only have one item there, and that's the election of a chair and officers for this committee. And as I said earlier, we will certainly miss Bob's participation in this committee. And we all know your term is expiring, and just because you want to be with your grandkids, I think it's just really <laughs> out of line, but what can I say? All right, so, uh, yes. Chairman. Is it imperative that we do this today? Because we're the missing, bylaws we're missing say so that we are to elect our officers yeah, at the June, June meeting. Well, we might have another June meeting. See if we can get everybody here. I mean, we, have, we can just nominate the people that aren't here. No, you can't. You, you can't <laughs> do that without their permission. I'm just kidding. No. Yeah, I, I know where you're going with that, but I think we really need to go ahead with this this evening. Okay, I'm going to open the nominations for officers and we'll start with, is there any nomination for chairman? I'll nominate Dina Kreitler. I'd like to nominate Kathy Waltz. As, I'd like to nominate Kathy Waltz as chair and Dina as vice chair. You can, I think you nominate for the chair first. first. You deal with that, that issue. And then you yeah, I think separately. Okay, are there any other nominations? So just to be clear for the future, other nominations, uh, nobody's term limited there. What? No one, none no. of your officers, are I didn't realize that. Okay. No. Nobody's gonna get elected to anything tonight and then next month be off the commission because they term limited and didn't get reappointed. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Okay, so we have any other nominations for chairman? Any other nominations for chairman? Any other nominations for chairman? <laughs> There being none, we'll close the nominating for chairman. All in favor of Kathy Waltz for chairman, please say aye. 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 Let's take a roll call on that, if you don't mind, Megan. Mm -hmm. I'm just full of surprises for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Megan Robert Mueller. Aye. Young Browns? No. Mary, I'm sorry. Kelly Fowler? Aye. 
Hi. Thank you. For the record, I really did think that, that there was a implementation problem, so I had to support my nominee. <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well then, thank you all very much. I will continue on as chairman of the Tourism Advisory Council. Next, we need a nomination for vice chairman of the council. I'd like to nominate Dina Kreitler. Okay. Second. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? None being heard, will you please take a roll call vote on Dina Kreitler for vice chairman? Mm -hmm. um, Kathy Waltz? Yes. Robert Mueller? Yes. John Brown? Yes. Kelly Fowler? Yes. And Dina Okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Dina. Thank you, Kathy. You too. Okay, we have two more offices to fill. And I'm going to make a nomination. Which which offices are those? Secretary I think in the Tourism Advisory Committee, there is only... Treasurer. No, there's only the chairman and the vice chairman. Yeah. That, well, that makes it easy, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, the Tourism Tax Commission has all four. Okay. Well, then it's us, girl. <laughs> girl power. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for your votes of confidence. We appreciate it. And we have just a couple more things. Is there anything left to be covered under committee reports on printing transportation or the wildlife refuge? Or do we think we've pretty well nailed it? Okay, and I might add, I think we've had a really, not just because of the presentation, but a good meeting. Thank you for your presentation. Your reports are always just very, very good and helpful. All you, right. you might start thinking next month that budgets are gonna be coming up and that one of the things that the role of the Tourism Advisory Committee is to advise, and traditionally we work very closely with Sandra on developing the budget and supporting the budget with the Board of Aldermen. So in, I guess August is it really gets hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. In July, you'll probably Seems start like putting we just it together. Did this. Uh, I know. Okay. So July, we'll have to yeah. get together yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, you may have a little group, a little working group looking at the, at the budget. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. At this point, I think we have accomplished our business and see our presentation. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you. And we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The Tourism Advisory Council stands adjourned.